Time for watercolor techniques, Miss Bronze's favorite art material. You guys are going to be learning 12 different watercolor techniques that you can use in your journal and art that you create throughout this year. Um, you guys are going to need a watercolor palette. You're going to need a mug of water, a paper towel, and paintbrushes of your choosing. Let's get started. Wet on dry, that technique is what you've been doing since elementary school. So you need to get your paintbrush wet. You need to kind of go around nicely. I always like to go in a circular motion when I'm loading up my brush. And you should only paint with the tip of your brush. And I'm gonna draw just a circle. And wet on dry is really good for areas that you want really crisp and clean detail because it stays in the constraints of the paper. It doesn't spread or anything. It might spread inside of what you're doing, but it won't go outside the boundary that you create in paint, or if you create like a boundary with Sharpie marker. When you guys are using watercolor paints, they are a little bit transparent. So if I was to paint over this word wet on dry, you can still see it. Just as a reminder, when you're cleaning your brush, you swish, you swipe, uh, with watercolor, you don't have to wipe unless there's still a lot of color on your brush because you need that water to activate the pigments over here. So wet on wet. That technique is all about getting your square wet first, not super soaked, but nice and wet. And then I'm going to get some paint, some different colors of paint. And I'm again, just gonna use the tip of my brush. Boom, fireworks, tie day, all the amazing things. Uh, then we have color bleed. So you are purposely trying to get your colors to bleed together by putting them close to one another. So I'm just going to do a rainbow. <laughs> I bet I surprised you guys with that, didn't I? So I like to just do a stripe of the color and then I gather my next color and put it right next to it. And you can see the red is already kind of sinking into where that is. If your guys' yellow is ever yucky, the biggest tip that I can give you is get it wet, get a little piece of paper towel and kind of suck that yucky color out of there if there's ever any green or there's any black so that you're just left with a nice yellow palette. All right, with wash, I'm actually gonna use the top portion of my lid right here and I'm going to put some water in this little square that I have and I'm gonna put a little drop of a color. Let's do like a blue violet, just for funsies. And I want it to be super, super, super watery. And then I'm just going to paint that wash right on my paper. This is how you make light colors with watercolor, is just by doing a wash, like this. Lots of water equals a wash. Now a graded wash, or otherwise known as like an ombre wash or a gradation wash is when you have the color go from dark to light. So I'm going to use blue and I'm gonna put a stripe of blue at the top. Then I'm going to, from the bottom, I'm gonna put a ton of water and watch the magic happen when the water meets the, the blue at the top. It will slowly seep down to that water and you'll have a nice gradation. Um, if you notice that it's kind of getting stuck, you can just take a little bit of just plain water and kind of do a little mixing right here in the middle as it gets pulled down to the bottom. Dry brush, you're going to get your brush, super dry. You're gonna get a color and that color is super wet right now, okay? So that's not great in order for dry brush. So I'm actually going to take as much color off as I can without rinsing my brush and very lightly just move my brush back and forth and it creates a really beautiful feathery texture. If I wanna get another color, I still have to clean my brush, dry my brush, get my color, dry my color, and then continue with the dry brushing. It's gonna kinda of look scratchy, like your brush doesn't have enough water on it. That is what you are actually going for. Salt is this awesome technique that creates, let me show you the dried one because it takes about 30 minutes to come into effect. It creates crystals on your paper because uh, what the salt does is it absorbs the water. Now, use just a tiny bit of salt. The only way that this technique works is if your paint is super wet. Uh, if it's dry, the, the chemical reaction won't work. So I'm going to kind of pull a couple colors in here 
while they are still nice and wet and not absorbed into the paper, I'm going to take a pinch, a pinch of salt and let it sit. If you move the salt or mess with the salt, the chemical reaction's over because you just added too much water to the NaCl. So, a little bit of science for you. Another bit of science is the rubbing alcohol. So similarly to the salt, we are going to create a very watery surface. And while it is still super watery, I'm going to add rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is the opposite of salt. What happens is it creates a chemical reaction that separates the paint. So you'll have rubbing alcohol and you're gonna to wanna to use the end of your brush. Don't put your brush in it and you just drop little drops of rubbing alcohol on it. And I think it looks like, when you look underneath a microscope, that's what it looks like to me. The next technique is oil pastel resist. Oil and water, man, another science one. It's like I did this on purpose or something. Oil and water do not like each other. They push against each other. Oil always floats to the top of water because of the fat content. So that is what will happen after you put watercolor over the oil pastel, the oil past the oil will rise to the top. It might not look like it after you do it originally, but this is dried for a day and you can see the oil pastel is on top, the water's underneath absorbed into the paper. So I'm just going to draw something very simple with this white pastel. I like using the white because it's like magic when I go over it. Ooh, make sure that your paint is very watery. And again, you'll start to kind of see the separation happening, but just wait till it's overnight and it'll happen more. Masking tape resist. You are just going to take some tape, push it down nice and hard. Cause if you don't, it'll be, it'll seep in. And then you just paint directly around it. Once it is dry, you take the masking tape off and a piece of white is stayed white and around it has stayed color. Splatter, you're going to get just a little bit of paint on your brush and you're going to use a flicking motion. And you can see it went everywhere. <laughs> and that's what happens with splatter. So it's really important that you also kind of protect your table mates. Maybe put some newspaper down, maybe block with a folder or something so that the splattering doesn't go everywhere for them. And never splatter with your whole brush. Just splatter with the flick of the metal. That's really all you need to splatter. Last technique is drip. This one you need to make sure that you uh, start at the top and you want to have a lot of water. So I'm going to actually put some water here extra water in the purple and I'm going to kind of create like three little lines with water that are going to help my paper help my drips to actually drip help gravity a little bit so I'm going to lift my paper up and I'm going to tap 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 again why newspaper is a good thing to have and ta-da I have 12 beautiful techniques go make some watercolor